Like I look like I'm going to unbind my powers and then I'm going to cast a circle with my coven and perform a seance. Practice safe summoning, guys. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be playing with a long overdue brand on my channel, LH Cosmetics by Linda Hallberg. I had seen Linda Hallberg and her brand in my periphery for a long time, and her look, her talent, her aesthetic has always really appealed to me. I like her sense of balance. I love what she does on eyes. I love her textures. And then I have, again, Naomi John to thank for reviewing her and basically just giving her like, you know, five stars, 10 out of 10 across the board. And I was like, all right, I'm doing it. Like this stuff just looks not just incredible in the sense of the formulas being really great, but also the shades being really, really awesome. And it being the right time because she has just released this really cool little quad of multi-chrome toppers and stuff. So I am thoroughly <laughs> in my Linda Hallberg bag today. Don't worry. I, I mean, not that you'd be worried, but like I didn't go get a piercing specifically for this video. I just found an ear cuff in my jewelry box from Ana Luisa and I just put it in there. I think that we can all agree that the septum ring looks cute on a lot of people. I do not need to run out and get a real one. We're going to do like a full like get ready with me, but the way that I always do like full face videos, her collection doesn't currently have complexion products that I saw. So, you know, I'll be, you know, supplementing here and there with a bunch of other stuff. But I did put out a video on Monday and some of you guys were like, um, it's less than 30 minutes, you know? And I realized that you guys would rather have time to hang out, play this in the background, what have you. Sometimes you just want something to do for a protracted period of time. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh, I, I don't know if you could hear me over this. <laughs> wow. Also, oh, I feel like my body's breaking down. The condition I mentioned in my last video, is still happening. I have been bleeding now for 26 days. I uh, don't worry. I am, you know, seeing doctors and things like that. I have I have lots of appointments coming up. I'm going to keep you apprised of what's going on, but also it's as big of a mystery to me as it is to anybody else at the moment. So. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this party started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color correct a little bit on this giant thing on my face. I have a little bit of the portfolio correctors from Lee Swatier. Here, and I'm just using a touch of that green, like a very, very small amount to just take down some of the chaos. Plus it's red too, because I have been spending the morning putting my light stem on there. So the light naturally like made it a little bit red. So yeah, we've got the Mac face and body here in N1. It's a little dark for me, but I'm kind of into that today. I want this to be a little bit better than real life, a little bit surreal. And for that reason, I think this is the perfect texture to start with on my face. I haven't used this in a while. It's just a fantastic skin tint to come back to because it's so high performing for something that's so like dewy in appearance. This is just my little Rare Beauty brush. I'm using that to even everything out. Again, if you're unfamiliar with Linda Hallberg, she is a Swedish makeup artist. She has, again, very similar, I would say, tastes to me. Obviously a lot more experience and a lot more talent, but very similar tastes and like her looks really appeal to my eye. She does a lot of fantastic textures, but again, like the eye to balance for me, where she's like, you know, dedicating a lot of energy towards like a couple of features on the face and then really, really blanking out other ones. Just the the way that she chooses what she's going to emphasize and the texture she's going to use. Like it's not demure. She pushes certain things and restrains other things. And I just, I really, really like the way that she does makeup. So it is a shame that it's taken me this long to review, but I'm glad though, because this is the Shimmer Saga and this came out very recently, I wanna say. And it is four of these like outrageous toppers for eyeshadows or, you know, really anywhere. And if I hadn't waited, I wouldn't have these in my hands, so. What I'm going to be going for today is going to be a very like, I don't know, signature Linda Hallberg kind of 
textured smoky eye. She just does a fantastic job with that kind of thing. Blown out exaggerated brows and I still can't figure out like I've watched some of her vlogs and she wears this crazy muted down nude lip for her skin because she's very pale. I bought one of her very pale lip color sort of sets and I still don't think it's as pale as the one she's wearing. So I'm not sure if it's her own brand she's wearing, but I want that one too. It's just, it's, it's a vibe. It looks really cool. Let's go for a little bit of concealer here. A lot right there. So yeah, I picked up a face palette. It is this Infinity Glam palette. It's got eight pans in it and show it to you guys. There are a few iterations of this and I picked this one up because I thought it'd be fun to be able to mix them together. They're quite pigmented but the shades are a little bit more desaturated or less saturated so they work pretty well on my skin. So I'm gonna try and use that as much as possible as like my entire face palette today and also on my eyes although yesterday you guys I used the Isamea palette and I just did this really awesome like red brown all like all over big blown out smoky eye and then I just topped it with this shade love that's like a pink shift purple shift green kind of trichrome right here it's like hard to even see because like the light there we go the way that it shifts in the light is just insane I couldn't stop looking at myself in the mirror it was just so awesome because there's something I think the word is spangly about those where yes you can wear them on their own and they will only show up when they turn in the light but also they completely transform depending on what you put underneath them so the set that I bought them with is two of her like matte crayons one is black and one is white because you can use them as cream eyeshadows and then top with these shimmer saga shades and it will give you like two very very different you know looks or many many different kind of looks but it was cool because when you were far away all you saw was this really pretty smoky eye from the Isamea palette and then you got close and just the spangles shifted in the light that's what's up it was awesome Kosa's doing the lord's work over here on that zit. I am going to powder pretty much everywhere because I am gonna be going in with powder products for the rest of my face. I'm going in with my Kosas. I can't get thoughts out, guys. I'm so sorry. Like, my brain is fried right now. Oh, I'm so tired. Um, Her powders are really pigmented. Even though they're desaturated shades, they're quite pigmented. And so I wanna make sure there's a really nice even finish on my skin before I put that on. Ah, okay. Learning the struggles here of a septum ring being actually um, a snot siphon. I am so sorry, guys. This is definitely like not the ideal first video of mine to be watching. Everybody's like, she's disgusting. What is she talking about? Yeah, this has to come out for now. Uh-oh, maybe it doesn't come out. Maybe I squoze it too hard. Ow, I squoze it too hard. It's staying. <laughs> I'm gonna get that off. All right, in the spirit of cutting to the chase at some point, let's start in with this Infinity Glam palette. So there's four mattes and four shimmers. I wouldn't even necessarily call them highlights or blushes or whatever. It's just textures, you know? Like, yes, you could see these as like a contour and maybe a bronzer, but it also works really well as an eyeshadow. This is a pretty, pretty like deep blush for me, if I were to call that a blush. And then this is a little bit too uh, apricot for me to be wearing as like a singular blush. And so mixing it with some of these kind of pinker shimmery shades also helps with the texture applying them, but it will also help balance out that apricot shade on me. So I'm going to start in with just a little bit of that. It's called Flare and it's just this kind of bronzer shade pretty neutral. She also has like pretty killer bone structure. So I can't help but be inspired to contour a little bit more. I don't know. It's like she has a very, very large following on YouTube and on social media. So I mean, she is both a makeup artist, like a true artist and an influencer. When you are like an actual creator, like making videos and content and stuff, I do feel like the makeup kind of becomes an extension of their public persona. So I am conflating the two almost intentionally. Yeah, bone structure, come through. So yeah, super smooth, very saturated. So it's like I just touch the brush in there and it does, it does that. You know what I think 
why I can't get the words out, I mean, besides my entire current situation, is because I am just so preoccupied with the fact that today is Thursday and the last three episodes in Pretty Little Liars Original Sin were just dropped and I am waiting for my opportunity to go watch them. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna start with Calypso right here. See if that works okay as a blush or if it's like too shimmery. I mean, I've used these mixed together before, but I've never just gone in with that alone. I mean, I always layer my blushes like crazy, but I think I will probably go with something more matte on top of that. I'm like mumbly. I should do like Hindash and just film and then narrate over the top when I'm feeling this out of it. But I personally, I don't know why, I just don't love voiceover videos, at least not for me. It's just like not enough, not enough va va boom, but I don't have a lot of va va boom to spare at the moment. Even though day is a little bit, like I said, like peach for me, I think I'm just gonna mix that one with Rhea, which is this like very neutral, I don't even know what color that is. It's just like a, so a neutral bronze, I guess. Put that kind of up here. I'm gonna go kind of all the way across the top on my cheeks and my nose, because I wanna draw freckles on. I want this to be something that even though it's a little bit more perfected, I want it to look a little bit more natural. You know, like skin texture, quote unquote, showing through, even though I'm recreating it a little bit. And then a lot of emphasis on the texture on my eyes, but like, the thing that's easy to overlook here is the quality of the pigments and of the formulas because this is a cardboard palette with not my absolute favorite packaging I've ever seen. I mean, as far as like the design. This design is, I'm sorry, I don't like it. And it's easy to look at that and go, this is every other palette on the market. It looks just like anybody else's palette at Ulta or something like that, where they've just kind of printed their branding on it. And that can feel like the products inside are also going to be an afterthought, but that's just not the case. You know, we have to try and suspend our judgment a little bit when it comes to brands that are more than likely self-funded, you know? Because packaging is expensive and this is also a much more eco-conscious way of going about it to have it in cardboard. And so I'm really glad that I got to see them in action and decided to buy them because the packaging is not selling the garment, but the garment itself is outstanding. It's so good. Like that's just such a fantastic, for it's a fantastic formula. It's a really pretty blush face powder formula. So what I'm gonna do to mimic what I've been liking to do on my eyes and really go for drama on my eyes is I'm actually going to start with, maybe I'll just start with one of her pencils. That's a, that's probably what she wants me to do. <laughs> but I haven't done this yet and I wanna do something that I haven't done yet. These remind me a lot of the Victoria Beckham silk, what are they called? Satin Kajals. I'm gonna create kind of an exaggerated wing. Probably could have gone with a smaller brush, something a little more precise, huh? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, oh. could someone please come slap me in the back of the head? Like, what's going on? But yeah, they remind me of the Victoria Beckham ones because they are so silky going on. They're not quite as like slick and gel-like going on as hers are, but they also are really workable for a minute and then they dry down and are super long wearing. I'm not sure that that was like the serve that I thought that it was going to be, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just wanted to try something new. So let's go with, I'm gonna go with the brown. It's called Crater. I'm gonna go basically like almost all over my lid with it, maybe even all over my lid with it. But it does grip a little bit more where I put the eyeliner first, as you might expect. It's a nice primer for it. from BK. I'm gonna go into Flare, which was the shade that I used as my bronzer, And I'm gonna add some opacity to this because I like that brown shade, but it's a little translucent in some spots. 
and I want to keep the gradient without too much of my skin showing through. Do you see how these formulas are doing the work for me? It's really hard to explain how easy your life gets when a matte formula just really performs. And also a matte formula that really performs is kind of understated. It's sort of hard to make a big deal out of. We always talk about when a matte formula is underperforming. You can't really hide behind a bad matte formula, you know? It is what it is and it's going to show up the way it shows up, but a good one, you have to touch it, you know? It's got a little bit of emollients to it, but it's not hard panning. It grips, but it blends, and it's really consistent in pigment without stamping a whole bunch. Okay, I'm gonna go with dust here, and that's gonna be a really good highlight to bring some light back in, and holy macaroni. You can see why <laughs> I was trying to be ginger with it, putting it on my face, because those highlights can be pretty blinding in a really good way. So they, they mix really well with other things to sort of break up the matte effect, but you can get some really intense reflection from them. So I'm gonna take something a little bit larger, a little bit fluffier. I'm gonna bring Rhea into the eye look here, up here. I wanna use a little bit of shimmer to break it up you know, that kind of very dissonant textural situation that could call out my poor blending. This is going to not just blend the two, but also bring the colors together. Make it look a little more at home. I'm going into Rhea underneath my eyes a little bit. Question, do we want to put a little bit of burgundy in? I think that we do. So this is the shade Zenith and I'm throwing this right in my crease. It's not gonna give me the shadowy illusion that I would typically go for, but it's just kind of surreal looking. And I'm okay with that. Plus there's gonna be a lot of shimmer that's going to obscure most of this anyway. So I'm just trying to get a really cool vibe going. Now we're gonna go into the Shimmer Saga. On the back of this, it says, there can never be too much glitter credited to Ms. Linda Holberg. <laughs> She's right. We have love. Passion, success, and crush. Crush is actually kind of green. So I think love is where I want to go with my focal point because it has a native color, like a base shade that is a little bit more rosy, but the flash is a little bit turquoise. So it's gonna, it's gonna bring the vibe together. And then we'll go for a little bit of success, which has that really nice gold flash to it. And that'll kind of also bring together the vibe. Okay, I mean, is it bad that the, that the septum ring look is growing on me? Because it is. Okay, I'm gonna start with love, love, love. I'm actually gonna go with my finger because we have to. Yeah, you start to see the turquoise, a little bit of turquoise. And while these are really magical when they're built up like this, I actually like them even better when they're really, really spread out because they start to add, like I said, that really beautiful kind of fractal spangly thing that only shows up when the light hits it. So I'm gonna clean off that A504 that I had. I'm going to dip it into that same shade. I'm gonna go underneath my eyes because it gives it this really cool kind of like rock and roll thing without it being too grungy. And these are pretty emollient too. Like when you dip a brush in, the brush actually like leaves a mark. So they've got a little stick of their own, you know? And then I just get freaking carried away. Like I said, most of it's gonna be covered up with this because I get really into the way that the light starts to hit in spots where you don't expect it to. And then I'm going to do my little trick. My little trick that I don't even know if it's a trick, but people seem to enjoy it. And that is taking a smudger on the end of your eyeshadow, your eyeliner pencil. I can't get words out. Dampen that just a little bit and dip that into success, which is this beautiful pearl shift gold. Gotta be careful. Like you can pick up so much product if you're not paying attention because it's very emollient. 
I'm gonna just put that there. Try and really push the limit of how much reflection I can get out of that. All right, I got it, Vega. So Vega is this amazing green. It's called Vega Flash. This is from her Flash Crayons collection. And then, like I said, this is a wave of flash. A wave of flash is very much like that shimmery cocoa kind of color that I like to wear. It does lean a little bit, not burgundy, more bronze. And then the Vega shade is quite green, but not like a blue green. So I'm going to use Vega on top here. I like the contrast of it against the other shades. And then I'm going to use a little bit of Vega right against the lash line and in my waterline. These are so smooth, so easy to work with, and they come in like a gazillion colors. All right, headband time is over for the moment. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Headband time might be over completely. I actually like constructed this entire look around the idea of a headband and I'm already over it. This is a goofy little double-ended elf brush that I got for free with an order one time. All right, so that was Vega. Now I'm going to take a Wave of Flash and that's going in the waterline. All right, I'm gonna make some necessary adjustments, do my eyebrows, because I think that's going to really bring things back into focus and then we're going to come back and we'll talk about these lips finishing touches and then we'll go over the products and stuff and do final thoughts. Trust me, there's still plenty of video to be had. <laughs> blush, I'm actually going to use the lip color because it's kind of not necessarily just a lip color. I'm going to use it on my cheeks. This is the Infinity Lip Gloss in Mellow Mauve. This is the Crayon also in Mellow Mauve. And then I got this pink opal. It's called the Fantastic because yes, it looks like a lipstick, but I think it's just supposed to be kind of an all over stick. And that is the color that I'm going to go with on my cheeks here. And what I do think that this look needs is a little bit of like skin skin vibes on the cheeks. So I'm going with this Well People brush. I like the shape of it. I'm just kind of tapping that right on the end there. I'm going really, really high up on my cheeks here. Again, I'm gonna probably go back in and draw some freckles. Don't mind me, just putting a little bit of it in my eye look. <laughs> it's going very winter and I'm into it, you know? Everything about it is really like cool toned, neutral or cool toned. Gonna use my khaki lip liner here to draw on some freckles. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I already have plenty on my nose, but. There, just to kind of like accentuate what's already visible through the makeup. In the interest of using this probably the way that it was intended to be used, I am actually going to use a highlight today. I'm going to use Dust, the very, very bright highlight that I used initially. I feel like this also goes really well with fake freckles just because like doing a little bit of highlighting here and there because I don't know, it's kind of that almost like K-beauty vibe. And then when you hit it with some finishing spray, it just looks like a little bit surreal, but fantastic too. <laughs> All right, so 
These two are the same shade. This is Mellow Mauve, and it is this lovely, very desaturated kind of mauve nude for me. And the lip gloss that goes with it. A lot comes out at once. I'm probably gonna use that swatch on my lips, but it has an SPF 15, which is like, I don't know, I think that's really exciting. And it is a, I believe, is this a sharpenable? I think it must be sharpenable, but it does not look sharpenable. Like it does not, it, it feels like it's plastic. Well, yes, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And it is lighter than my natural lip color. Super, super smooth. Grab that swatch. The glossy lip with everything else, especially in that super desaturated color, it's everything. No plumping qualities, not anything I can feel at least, like nothing tingly. And it has a really nice, soft, sweet smell. This liner goes really well with all of my other really washed out nude lip glosses too, like Victoria Beckham Bikini and Westman Atelier Nana. We need a little bit of contour. I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona. This is on sale right now and like sold out on Sephora, which makes me think that they're either revamping these or just discontinuing them, so. That's sad, because I really like this. So I'm just accentuating a little bit further back in the shadows where we had done with the one from her palette. And yet again, the thing that I always talk about, do you see how, like up here, maybe my blending's not quite right, but also it just looks kind of patchy because I think that like there's too much shimmer up there and my veins are showing through. So it's something that I personally clock, but I don't know if everybody else would. I like to use the Hindash palette for that because it's going to just blur everything in one step. I'm grabbing a 202, I'm gonna dip it into Ego right here. And the blur is real. I'm gonna also dip into Alter, that's gonna give me just a little tiny bit of blur over the shimmer. It's not that you can't wear shimmer. It's just about knowing where to push and pull, you know? Grabbing a little bit of my Kosa's powder right on the inner corner. I think that when you're working with this much grunge, you also have to make sure that you hit the details so that things aren't distracting. Like, I feel like even though there's highlight on my nose and that is what I want, I still want a little bit more like of a blush look on my nose because that's gonna give me a little more matte and a little more saturation. There we go. I think it's the buttoned up collar, but this is giving me like goth schoolgirl right now. <laughs> And I love it. I'm using a little bit more of flare to like fine tune this shape. Flare is that like light brown, contoury, bronzery color for me. And then I need just a little bit more something underneath. I'm gonna take Rhea. There, I look like it's not a phase, Mom. Hit this with a little bit of setting spray here. Give you a chance to see it up close. Like, is my blending amazing? No, it's not. I really just like slammed everything on all at once. But I like it. Oh no, with the whole look, now I think I do like the septum ring. <laughs> Linda also has stretched ears, which makes me feel seen. Seen and seen, you know what I mean? With the headband, it's giving gossip girl. <laughs> Stop it, get some help. All right, let's chat prices on these products real quick. The Infinity Glam palette, that was $45. These are on several websites. They do ship internationally. And I saw a lot of them on Beauty Bay, but I ordered directly from her website. So again, Infinity Glam palette, $45 for eight pans. It's pretty good. The crayons, those were all $18 a piece. So 
what is that, like $10 cheaper or something like that, I'm not sure, than the Victoria Beckham ones. I haven't done the math on it, like pound for pound or anything like that, but there are more shades and I do think I like the formula better. It's a toss up, but like, especially for the cost and for, I wanna say shipping internationally, I would definitely like go for the Linda Hallberg ones first. The Shimmer Saga kit came with the quad and two pencils and that was $60. And I totally lied about the lip kit coming all together. I just ordered all three of them because they appealed to me. So the Fantastic in Pink Opal was $23. Again, that's a lipstick and you can use it on your cheeks or whatever. The Infinity Gloss was $19 and the Crayon Lip Liner, like I said, $18 pencils are $18. And I think if you buy like five pencils, you get a discount. Yes, add five crayon lip liners or crayons, mixing also possible to the basket and get one of them for free. Yeah, so buy four, get one free, add five, one of them will be free basically. It's a weird way of saying it. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not feeling the headband with this. I'm feeling far more like I'm in the craft without the headband, you know? Like I look like I'm going to unbind my powers and then I'm going to cast a circle with my coven and perform a seance. Practice safe summoning, guys. All right, so I mean, those are the prices. That's the scoop on the brand. And I think I'm just gonna give you guys like thoughts on each product and then like an overall takeaway. So as far as the Infinity Glam palette, like I said, don't let the, I, it's kind of the case with all of this, but don't let the packaging deter you. It's still a very quality feeling packaging. It's just not like the most aesthetically luxurious thing in the world. So it's not particularly my taste, but these formulas are out of control and the shades are quite nuanced. If those appeal to you and you're trying to decide, you know, on a good like full face palette or something like that, this is definitely not $45 poorly spent. I like it a lot and I'm going to keep it out, you know, to keep touching into it kind of thing. The Shimmer Saga. These are awesome. This is very Danessa Myricks, uh, Pat McGrath. It's, it's giving that like, beautiful multi-chrome fantasy. I should tell you what the actual price on that was because I got it as a set. So the, ooh, the actual palette is $42. That's kind of a lot. 42 divided by four is $10.50 a shadow. That's kind of wild, y'all. So that I think is why I went for the $60 to have the pencils with it and everything. It's a little bit expensive, but kind of all of these sorts of things are that light works palette from Danessa Myricks, and I'm not even saying it's not worth that. It's just a little expensive. It's $85. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of six and one half a dozen to the other. They're just pricey for these kinds of textures. If these things excite you and it balances out against, you know, buying individual pans or something, these are definitely those kinds of really exciting textures that you might see from some of the, like, you know, semi-popular well-known indie brands like Cleona or Lethal or something like that. You know, that's what I would liken them to. I think that it's easy to overlook something like a pencil, especially in like a makeup artist line because a lot of the stuff is very flashy, but these are exceptional. Like these are kind of my new favorite pencils. The eyeliners especially, like these colors are so gorgeous. And the green one, Vega Flash, is the one that I have been wearing the most because I like green on brown eyes and there's something that you don't really clock about the fact that it's green but it works really well. Like I wish that, I, I'm sure that it exists, but like a really great deep green mascara would be killer, would be amazing and no blue in it. You know, well, I mean, obviously there's gonna be some blue and green, but like not nothing towards aqua, nothing towards a deep teal. I want green, I want like a hunter green. That would be really dope, but uh, the Aweva Flash is my new favorite bronze pencil. I wanna swatch it against my second favorite bronze pencil, which is, the Fenty one, because the Fenty one's really pretty, but it's quite gold, and so it doesn't quite have the visual impact that something like this does. This is, I'm, I swear guys, I wanna go ahead and say, this is probably the least cute look that I've gotten from this stuff lately, and I can't really tell you why. I think it's because I played only in her stuff today, whereas I have been combining it with other things in my collection lately, and there's something about these with the Isamea palette that just, 
it's off the charts, as you might imagine. It's like, you know, it rips a hole in the space-time continuum. So yeah, I have been using this with that like smoky grungy eye that I've been going towards a lot lately. And it's just the right amount of visual impact that it is helping to elongate my eyes and still bring the illusion of like a thicker lash line and a, you know, a more elongated upturned like cat eye kind of vibe, but it's not so dark that it might as well be black. You don't clock it as like a graphic eyeliner. It's just, again, building the illusion. So I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Her crayons. I just need to figure out how the heck you're supposed to, just doesn't look like something you're supposed to sharpen. Am I going to ruin this if I sharpen it? It doesn't. I swear to God, you guys, this does not turn. So you must have to sharpen it. All right, we have to find this out together. This is a fact-finding mission. I have so many sharpeners. All right. Oh, it's just a very elegant wood pencil. Yeah, it sharpens just fine. And it doesn't, it just doesn't look like it would do that, but sharpens just fine. All right, cool. <laughs> Glad we figured that out together. I think something else that might undersell on this stuff is the lip products like this being having spf in it and not tasting like spf is amazing the colors are outrageous they're so good i didn't use this on my lips but i want to go ahead and swatch it for you the little fantastic it's a perfect balmy lipstick in that same beautiful color family i love when i can have like the perfect combo of a glossy finish that has just enough pigment to it that it really like brings a look together, but in a desaturated enough tone that it doesn't just steal the show from the rest of my face. And that is what the like pink opal and the mellow mauve and everything do. She does really beautiful washed out lips for like, you know, everybody's skin tones. There's like a whole bunch of different ones, but I think that anybody can find that right shade to do a, like a, a washed out lighter than your skin tone kind of lip to let something like a grungy eye really like steal the show, so own the moment, be the main character, and still not have like concealer mouth, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with concealer mouth. I'm kind of into it. It's sort of like the bleached brow look to me, but this is also like a fantastically wearable kind of effect, so. Y'all, when I say I just really tried, like I'm using the oil on the inside of my hand. These things don't go anywhere. All right, so I think I'm ready to give you guys my final thoughts on like Linda Hallberg, the LH Cosmetics brand as I have gotten to know it, you know, the, the thesis here. And that is, it is pretty magical and there's something about this that just makes me feel the fantasy. I don't know why really, but it's like the colors just have this little bit more coolness to them that are like a little bit more like neutral or a little bit more washed out that makes it so that I can really pile them on with reckless abandon and still get this very like native toned down look that nothing is particularly looking like it's wearing me. She has models on her website of, of many different skin tones and things like that. So I don't think that it's just for me. I just mean that like when I did order the shades that I felt like were intended for my skin tone. They were just very easy to like push, push, push the limits with. And that is how I ended up with this very like, I don't know, Donnie Darko, the craft. I don't know, I'm gonna go put on my Mara Hoffman Monty pants, Mont pants with the pleats and like live by weird 90s private school goth girl fantasy, <laughs> which I did not even know I had. Well, I did because Donnie Darko, but still. Yeah, it's, it's like such a mood. It's such a mood and I like, it's the confluence of all of it. It's not that it was one thing that made the whole look pivot. It's the way that it all comes together. And I also, again, I always like when makeup formulas and their shades and you know, just the delivery systems make me think differently about what I want out of makeup. And this just has like inspired me. Every time I like touch it, I just, I'm excited to interact with it, excited to put it on, excited about what I can create. I have sold the garment to myself on this look, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.